Saying this year has been a difficult one is really just the overstatement of the year. But it's been difficult to get even a vlog in this year. In fact, this may be my only official vlog of the summer. And the summer's already passed because it's October. But I'm very excited because this park has a lot of rumors attached to it going forward in 2021 and beyond. And it's also a park that I have endorsed and have a special relationship from my childhood and still have a strong feeling for today. Especially one of their landmark attractions, which I can't ride today because in Ontario, no roller coasters or theme park attractions are really allowed to open except for the House of Frankenstein coaster down the street. Don't ask me, but we're at Marineland, this vast parking lot open looking for basically the business that it used to have that filled this lot many years ago, much like the first visit I had here. Uh, but here's hoping that in the next couple of years, we're gonna see a major rejuvenation of this area and it full of cars. Because I think, at least if rumors come true, that this may be a new major competitor to Canada's Wonderland and also for the surrounding region of Upper New York State. A lot of potential here at Marineland, so let's have a look to see what's happening. Okay, so we're in Marineland here now, and uh, just behind me is the new family top tower or drop tower that has been sitting here for quite a bit of time. Uh, as we're going to find out during this quick little tour, and unfortunately, at the beginning of this uh, year, Marineland had two rides delivered. Uh, that they had hoped to get installed for this year. Their 59th running, the Topple Tower, and another tower ride attraction that we're gonna see on the other side of the way. So as you can see, none of the rides are unfortunately open because uh, that is part of the bylaw for COVID that is in effect for this area. I will say this is probably the first time I've ever really been in a theme park of which all the rides are not actually functioning so it's a very weird experience sort of checking this stuff out with everything covered up. Uh, I was just talking to customer service and some of these rides as you're going to notice are not installed. That doesn't mean that they are going away, it just means that they are in their yearly maintenance that is prolonged because of the fact that they can't run. One thing I had said on my last visit here, and I will say it again, is that while there's not much to the landscape here, it is beautiful. Um, like, it's well maintained enough that you're getting that park vibe, that you're strolling through a nice landscape park that just happens to have rides in it. The biggest comparison, or the easiest comparison I can make is Parc de Traction. Parc de Traction uh, in Paris, which is kind of like, a, you know, an, an ornate park, an art park with rides in it as well. Marineland is nowhere near that, obviously, but uh, for what it does have and the fact that there's just like no aesthetic, like advertising, like look at this path. I'm in an amusement park right now, or a theme park, and that's all I can see behind me. Um, I don't know, there's something, there's a mystique to that that I enjoy. I like the fact that there's so much land here that they can use it to give space to the experience. I'm going on and on about it. I did kind of say that last time, but I do like that and I'm really hoping there's a rumor that this park may be sold uh, in the next couple of years or maybe it's already happening. Uh, the situation at hand obviously will play into that. Um, about whether or not theme parks and amusement parks are really going to be a successful model going forward. Well, that is a discussion for another time. Um, but I wouldn't want this place to have another big gust. Just a crazy gusty wind day. Windy day today. I wouldn't want this park aesthetic to be lost after 60 years to a major company or corporation coming in and just slapping their advertising all over it. It really would take away from what the feel is of Marineland. 
Um, I think a lot about Ocean Park when I come to this place. I was just talking about Ocean Park at the gate. Uh, I do think it's a great model, and they're obviously having their struggles too. Um, but if you, this type of experience is something that we have a future for, or at least that uh, you guys that go to these types of places has a future for, I really kind of want to see places like this retained and saved. I'm going off, but I just don't like a lot of advertising. I like the fact that I don't have music blaring behind me. Okay, a big digression. We're moving on. Let's go check out more of what's going on in this here place. It's not that much different looking than it was, say, last year. These rides are still intact and, you know, it's the small details like, you know, the grass and the stones and that, which I'm sure, like, because of this year's situation, um, yeah, that's just not a detail that they're really worried about or concerned about. But these fabulous rides, I love this little section here and what we have with Ocean Odyssey and also Hurricane Cove. Two great classic rides, especially Ocean Odyssey. It's like one of the best, at least one of the most beautiful flat rides, I think, in Canada. In fact, I'd probably say this is the most beautiful flat ride in the country. I really cannot think of a better uh, themed attraction. So Marineland has these little diamonds that most people wouldn't think about in relation to the controversy in relation to this park, which really is not fair, but whatever. Um, Moving on, we're going to have a little bit of stroll in this vacant little park, but uh, yeah, we're going to get close to an area where apparently there's some development happening and all the exciting stuff is happening. So that's coming up next. We've got Flying Dragon right behind me, another great attraction here. Awesome theming for that ride. And the swings behind me here too. Really no point in pointing these out since uh, they're not running. We'll see what's going on in the back in a second. Just give you an idea how much space this place has. Uh, so I've just come down, which is off the beat, the main path that goes around the park. And as you can see, this area, which is kind of like a service road, it's just open. And what it leads to is what was to be one of the next big projects for Marine Land, which was this bird sanctuary, which is actually all the way over here. This never actually got completed. However, there is construction cranes, or at least there is a digger over there. And as I was told by some of the staff at the front, there's some work on the 
other side over here. It's so hard to really get a concept of how big this area is, especially with all the wind. Okay, so we're on the side where all the action is kind of happening here, and uh, behind me is Magic Experience. Unfortunately, it is a discontinued attraction, as was announced for this year. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to ride it before uh, it was discontinued last year. It was announced after I knew that, but uh, it's fine. I have been on it before. It's very interesting also in the fact that uh, this attraction was a new build for, well, it was a new attraction for Marineland. It was built brand new, and there are older attractions here like the Husk Condor that are gonna stay. Um, that, uh, yeah, like, see, like, they would be beyond their service life. This is a Husk attraction too, and it's done. So obviously it's had some problems. It wasn't that very exciting anyway. So I look forward to seeing what they might put there instead. Let's talk a little situation, shall we? Say you have an exciting new attraction, you've done your due diligence to ensure that the German engineers that are going to assemble the ride for you on site, a new build, uh, will be able to arrive in the country, have suitably quarantined, and followed all the protocols and procedures in order for that to occur. And then you find out that that same team of German engineers was stopped at the border and told that they must leave the country because they must quarantine for another 14 days once they arrive. And being German, they weren't going to have that, were they? So they immediately basically said thanks, but no thanks, and went back home. And thus, you have the situation with here, Marineland's new attraction that was supposed to open for this year. Now, it's not a huge issue because the fact of the matter is that they couldn't have opened it this year anyway, but now, the unfortunate situation, if I'm going to say situation enough, is that they don't know whether or not they're going to be able to open it for 2021, which is really kind of not fair for a park that is trying to change what it's about and really putting some investment in to give people that which they asked for, which was more attention on attractions and those that don't really harm the environment. Let's just generalize it. Well, here you are and they can't even build the thing, even though they try. I'll admit, I feel bad for Greenland. They don't seem to be able to cut, get cut a break when it comes to this particular area, especially because there used to be a topple tower on this pad of which uh, the ride had a lot of structural problems and they had to replace it. They finally have a ride to replace it, which is this one, and they can't build it right now because of the current situation. So it's very unfortunate. Um, I really am hoping that they are able to have the big year next year that they deserve because it is the 60th anniversary, but this year it hasn't been so good. 
Uh, it is nice though that this is one of the few parks in the country that was able to open anyway because uh, as has been well documented, most parks are struggling period because they just aren't opening their gates. Uh, so here's a little, uh, the entire ride is here and as explained, the uh, team from Germany, this is a Zier Starship ride. I have been on one of these in Korea, so if you want to see my reaction to this particular model of ride, do watch my Gyeongju World vlog, which uh, has a review of this particular ride. Uh, not too intense on the stomach sensation, but a lot of intensity uh, if you don't like, say, hanging 12 stories above the ground with only a horse collar restraint on you, which is what you get with this. Uh, an excellent addition for this park, especially um, because it's unique and nowhere else in Canada can you get it. And as far as I know, nowhere else in North America has one as well, which would be a really unique and really, this park is, for all of the things that are said about it, they seem to be really thinking ahead and having the foresight to not invest in things that are cheaper that really would just be a new attraction and they could just plonk in here. They've always kind of thought outside of the box. You can see that with the history of the rides here, especially the Huss rides. A lot of attractions that aren't available, say, at Canada's Wonderland. Some are available at La Ronde, but that's a little further off to get to. So, yeah, Marineland's always had that kind of you know, against the, rain, against the grain type of attitude towards how they offer their amusement experience. One thing I don't like seeing, however, can't really see it there, so we'll try it again. But one thing I don't like seeing is this here particular contraption not running. Dragon Mountain, probably, you know, I, I do have to do a top five Canadian coasters vlog. I'm pretty sure that this has to go into it just because of how unique the ride is. I'm not going to go into it. I covered this all during my Marineland vlog from last year. I forgot where I was for a second there, but it's not running today, so I can't really give any genuine thought on it other than it needs to be protected. It's a classic ride. It's an arrow. It's one of the last great arrows that are existing, and if it goes, I'm done, guys. You've taken out too many arrows. And I can't deal with it. I love aerodynamic coasters, regardless of how rough they are. So let's move on. We're going to go back down to the front of the park and wrap things up here because that's kind of it for our tour today. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a sec. See that being in a park like Marineland somewhat drives me crazy just because of the untapped potential of what this place is. I mean, like the, this, I've said it before in the last vlog, but the building that's built on top of this pad, which is where the skyscraper is, which is where I am right now, I get a better view of the park overall. Like it's a real big, like well-built, sturdy structure. It's a beautiful building. It's been built for many uses. We have concessions here, but this area it, generally since it was built, I don't think it's really been used that well. We have tons of space to eat and a beautiful view of Niagara Falls behind me. But it's a trek getting up here. It's no joke. I would like to go to Washington. I don't feel like this is going to Give it a try. No dice. think that if they put some sort of transportation, be it a cable car, funicular, a chairlift, I don't know what they could do, but you can get a lot more people up here. Even the path to get up here is somewhat uh, ambiguous. And because of that, this attraction is just kind of getting a bit overgrown and all that kind of stuff because uh, this is really like probably the best attraction in the entire park maybe uh the view from the top of the tower when you get shot up it is unbelievable again my other vlog will cover that but uh yeah i just it's just a shame to see an area with so much potential just not being utilized and undiscovered i know the last time that i was here it wasn't that much different 
as far as how many people are up here. I think there was like three in total, and that was a regular day. So, you know, it's just like, look at that. It's a great, unbelievable structure, underutilized. I, the medieval theming here is way better than it is at Wonderland overall. The money that was put into it is amazing. Uh, but, over time, it hasn't really been used all that well. I didn't do one last time, so I'm doing it today. But I'm in the Marine Land washroom. And as you can see behind me, it's pretty impressive. Spacious. If you like that like old school 80s feel, and also the smell of wood, the types of varnish and stain that they used in those days, then this is a washroom for you. Because it's just, it's the real deal. All 80s, baby. You gotta love it. Look at the roof, too. Like, I love the design. It really is. It really is, mat like, very big. There's a limit to seven people, which they're not really gonna have a problem with, really, right now. And this is just the men's. Massive, massive. I'm in the Deer Park area. Huge washroom. And also, super clean. Awesome atmosphere. And then when you come out, you can say hello to the deer on your way out over here. All right, so that is it for our COVID Marine Land update here. I'm going to put this... I haven't mastered this yet, have I? Uh, so, you know, a little bit of a bittersweet visit because, you know, I couldn't ride any rides, obviously, and much shorter because of that. Um, but, you know, the experience is the same. Not that I was expecting anything any different, um, but it's the potential of what this park has behind it that's the exciting thing. Now, I had a conversation about it, but I'm not going to go into speculation because it is all speculation right now. And as I've been told, most of the staff here don't actually know what's going on themselves, but there's a lot of rumors going on. You know, this is an attractive property uh, for someone that has the money to invest into it. We covered that during this video, but let's just look at the facts here. This is a major tourist attraction, regardless of how you look at it, because of where it's located. And if it does get significant investment over the next couple of years, we're talking a park that could compete with Wonderland Maybe not at the same level as far as what they offer, but at least for thrills. If Marineland wants to go into that route and have a nice, well-balanced family side and a thrill side to this park, which is already kind of set up as, there's a lot of potential there. I know there's a lot of people in the Niagara region that are looking for bigger, thrilling attractions while they're here. A lot of the stuff that you'll notice that I review is really kind of kitschy, and, you know, stuff that was maybe, maybe state-of-the-art in the 80s, but no longer currently. So, this whole region needs a bit of an update in this park. Obviously, they're looking to that now, and there's some exciting attractions coming, but I'm really excited for what the future has in the store, because there's a lot of potential here, and who knows what could happen in the next couple of years. Here's looking forward to what will be the future of Greenland coming soon. And I'm looking forward to hopefully coming here early next year to ride that new ride and get back on a Dragon Mountain among some of the other favorite attractions that I have here. If you do get the chance, come this year or next to support this park and hopefully it's a great, bright future. That's signing off here from Marineland. Until next time, thanks for watching, guys.